This is Ken here with MrTruck.com. And for this video series, I'm partnering with TransWest Truck Trailer RV north of Denver. And what we're trying to do is cover trailering tips. We know how dangerous trailers can be or how intimidating they can be. So we want to give you some advice and tips, some special uh, features that may make it easier for you to get used to it and do all the fun stuff. Welcome to another show about trailer safety and make it so you can handle them and not have not be worried about them. So that's what we're trying to do is give you tips on trailer towing. And I'm Kent with MrTruck.com. This is CJ with TransWest Truck Trailer RV, and he is the trailer expert. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it's it's cool. We're here at TransWest here uh, north of Denver, and we're going to talk about short bed trucks. And mostly you'll want to know how to prevent knocking out your truck's back window, because it happens a lot. I get calls every week, especially on Dodge Mega Cab. This one here is a crew cab behind us, but the Mega Cab, the same size bed, is on all their other beds. Their quad, their crew cab, but there's that big blind spot in the back corner, and people are constantly, you know, turning too tight or backing too tight and knocking out the window or hurting the cab. So. You know, try to help you prevent that $500 to $1,000 damage that happens every day. So that's what we're going to do. We're also going to talk about a few other things. And uh, I, I hear this question too, is aluminum wheels. Now aluminum, you know, contracts and expands more than steel. And a lot of people don't always get that, get the information when they buy a new trailer. You got to torque those wheels several times. Not only if you do every 500 miles or whatever you do it, but you know I've seen nug nuts come off, and I've noticed on mine I torque the heck out of aluminum ones. So what do you tell people on that? So, well, the, one of the nice things is, is you know when we have a trailer finish at the factory that's got those aluminum wheels, like our Cimarrons are standard with them. We order quite a few Logans upgrade to the aluminum wheels. You know by the time we get them in here, you know it's about a 650 mile trek from from uh, Cimarron up here. You know, we're about 500 miles from Logan, so by the time we get them here, we're going to run them through our shop regardless when we bring them in here, uh -huh. but it's a good time for us to go back over them once again. Yeah. Um, then at that point, uh, you know, it has been torqued at the factory, we're, we torque it before it leaves here, so we feel pretty confident in that. Then at that point, I mean, it's, it's a lot of it's just going to depend on usage, um, how often you're, you know, actually hauling that trailer. Um, but it is something to check kind of on a regular basis, and it's probably something that gets over, is oversighted a lot, yeah, you know, yeah. in the industry. And that's, that's one thing. And then another thing that's important when you're, you know, trying to size up your truck to your trailer, which is what we're doing today, is trying to figure out how to measure for a short bed truck, especially. But people, all those words, you know, gross vehicle weight rating, trailer towing ability, rear axle weight rating, payload, all those things, you know, it's a bunch of stuff to figure out. Yeah. And, you know, forget the commercials on TV, because they'll tell you all the half tons will tow 13,000 pounds. Well, the only half ton that does that is a long bed, two wheel drive, you know, biggest engine, different gear ratio. It's not the one you probably want. So you got to watch all that advertisement nonsense. And it's really hard, too, to find all these things out. Now, Ram, there's a website they have. You put your VIN number in there to tell you all the details of that truck. Same way with GM. GM is really cool. They got stickers in all the trucks in the last, since 2019 on a half ton, 2020 on the heavy duties, that tell you exact details of that truck. The, the max towing of that capacity, the uh, tongue weight, the axle weight. And that's a lot of people don't know that when you put a trailer on there, that tongue weight takes away from what your payload was. So if it starts out at 2,000, now it may only be 1,200 pounds. So all that stuff is, is how you stay safe towing. And that's what this series is all about, is keeping you safe and keeping me safe, because I might be driving behind you. And we wanna, we're gonna, so we're gonna show you some of the options on short bed trucks and how to fix that problem. So we're gonna show you how to measure it, because most people have no idea. And everybody's out there, you know, measuring the distance from the cab to the trailer and all this other stuff. But the most accurate way, we're gonna show you next. Don't go away, Mr. Chuck.TV, we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, what's always going to be important is you talk to the right salesperson who knows something, and CJ is that guy. He knows he knows a lot about trailers. So, how do they reach you if they're interested? In, you know, they, they can buy trucks here, they can buy trailers here, Transwest. Yeah. Best thing to do is just call our main number. That's 303-684-3400. Uh, we have a very capable horse trailer staff, so anybody can help you out, uh, not just myself. And then just if you're interested in a truck, just ask for the truck sales, and those guys will help you out on that side as well. And then obviously you can see our inventory, transwest.com. Uh, it, it's really a good idea to call in right now, the way that inventory is flipping over really fast. Um, you know, one it might say it's available right now, but the next minute it's got a deposit on and it's sold. But we got something else coming in. We try to keep the staff updated on on what we're you know bringing in on trade or purchasing and bringing in here to to make available. Oh, oh sure, and I'm glad you got a lot of uh, order units coming in. Yeah, you're doing everything you can, and that's a good idea. The truck guys here, if you have those questions about your gross vehicle weight rating, your tow rating, all that, you come in and ask those guys or call them and ask them those questions, and they can help you with that because that's the kind of stuff they have to look up too. Yes, and that's a good idea. So make sure you get a hold of these folks at Transwest Truck Trailer RV. So here's what we're talking about. This is short bed extension. Now trucks are all different sizes now. I think all these short beds are made for garages to fit and I don't know why that's the number one priority, but that seems to be it. And this puppy here that we're looking at is a 12 inch. And this happens to also be a four inch drop. So if you got a flatbed truck and you need to reach all the way down to the ball, this is the one you get. It's called the XL. But truck beds, they come, you know, in five foot six, five foot seven, uh, six foot three, six foot four, six foot um, eight, six foot ten. I mean, that's heavy duties and, and short bed half tons. And it surprised you how many half ton trucks actually use a gooseneck trader. I mean, a two horse gooseneck is, is, is the right size for a lot of these half tons with the bigger engines. And that is the problem, and that's where this truck, they actually there's a 16 inch just like this, and that's where it was invented for, was for those short bid half tons. But now they're on everything. Like I was talking about, that Dodge Mega Cab, we sell 16 inches all the time for those. And this one happens to have a spring-loaded latch, it's like the old Fulton latch, you just drop it on the ball, and it's locked. And it comes with a cable set you pull up when you're running the jack up. And that's really cool. But all those different sizes of trucks, they make different sizes of extensions. Now this is a pop-up brand. I mean they've got extensions from Gen Y, Shocker Hitch, b and I think pop-up has the most different sizes for them. But how do you know which one you need? I mean after you knocked your window out and if you took pictures maybe you can measure it from that. But that's kind of an expensive lesson. So we're going to show you how to measure in your bed against the ball and then the exercise you need to do, which is a quick easy thing to do, to figure out if that's going to be long enough, if you need longer, if you need shorter. That's also a problem on bed rails. Yes, bed rails. That's this thing here with plastic on it. If you get too long of an extension on a lot of these horse trailers and you make the trailer longer with the longer neck from the extension and again the coupler, then these wing gussets and wing gussets, I mean a lot of the horse traders, the better ones, have giant wing gussets. That's what you see on the front of these. A lot of them have big ones. And so you gotta watch that because you can run into the bed rail with this wing gusset that's right by your coupler. So that's why we wanna measure this. That way, if you, you know, there's some 11 inch ones from Gen Y that have a real hard time uh, on these, these traders. And several trader companies do that, the big wing gussets. And Hartzell, I know it has a double wing gusset. But anyway, that's what you gotta look for. So if you do this exercise, you will be so smart, you'll be the smartest one in your block, you'll know everything about whether these wing gussets are going to fit your trailer, whether or not you're going to hit the bed rail, and how much room you have between the trailer neck and the bed rail. Very important things. So here's how we do it. You know, if, if you don't know which extension you might need for a short bed truck, this is how you measure it. Basically, CJ is going to put the tape measure in the center of the ball, and he's going to go toward the driver's side fender well, and he's going to make, make a mark at 9 inch for a 9 inch extension. And make one at 12 inch for the 12 inch extension we have. And 16 inches for the longest one that's available on the planet. 
And this will give you an idea. These marks represent actually having the hitch in the trailer already. So we're going to drive into it at a 90 degree angle. So the trailer is not going to be behind your truck. The trailer is going to be out your driver's side window. And that way you'll see exactly where your trailer will be after you add whatever extension you think you need. So we're going to start with, uh, well, the 9 inch we can start with. Now, an advantage of Cimarron trailers, they all have 8 foot necks. Yep, 8 two. That's yeah, standard. and that, that's that's a good thing because the longer the neck, the more room you're going to have, so you don't run into the back of the truck and you don't run into the bed. Another thing is your, you know, it used to be in the old days, all these trailer couplers had our two set screws to hold it in, plus a through pin. And a lot of traders have gone to one set screw and a through pin, but that's kind of what you're dealing with. And if it does have a set bolt you can do that on a 16. This is all about being safe so your truck doesn't get an accident and the thing would slide forward. So that's how that stuff works. You gotta you gotta know which which hitch you're gonna get. Better ones have a through pin and two set bolts. Uh, and we'll cover a few more things about this but now we've got the dots on the floor. We know everything and we're going to back up at the trailer at a, a jackknife and see where we are. So you can see those marks in there. Yeah, there's three of them. We're going to start with a 9 and go to the 12 and go to the 16. Now you can see the three marks that CJ made on the bed. And we're hitting the first one, which is 9 inches. So you see that one? That's our first mark and that's where this would be with a nine inch coupler extension and we talked about this one is 12. well if you look at the nose right there at nine inches instead of 12 inches that's where it is right now so actually with this long necked cimarron a nine inch would work and we know that because we've got all this room above the bed rail and you can see we got a gap between the truck and the trailer. It's eight foot two as standard. Okay, eight foot two on these Cimarron's. That helps a lot with these short bed trucks because you can see we're not hitting the ram. We got looks like, oh, six inches at least between them and we are tighter than uh, 90 degrees. Okay, at 90 degrees, we clear everything. We have plenty of room from the bed rail to the edge of the trailer. And we have all this room, which means that we could even back up a little tighter with this, with a nine inch extension. Now without the nine inch extension, we would be closer to the cab. We would be closer to the truck. So that's the whole idea and you know this gap is as important as you know when, when we talk about trailers I mean, keeping them level you're usually looking at the running board on the trailer to make sure it's about the same height front and rear when it's loaded and that's the same way up here when you're loaded you want to keep the bed rail of the truck at least i mean i like six to eight inches a lot of rvs are clear down to four inches but this room here gives you room to go through dips so that's interesting and usually driving through a circle, a tight circle, you can get in trouble, but the most of the time people hit the trailer with their truck is backing up, because backing up you can crank it tighter than going forward, of course. So this here is actually at the nine inch extension with this trailer would work really well for most situations you would get into. You got plenty of bed rail clearance, even though this is a tall truck to get uh out of the way when you're going through a dip you know a lot of gas stations have big dips if you're out checking the cattle you go through some big dips so you need to have plenty of clearance between the the bed rail and the trailer so now we're going to move it over to the 12 inch which is right next door to your left there and see we know it's going to have more room actually but that's our next target. We're not even going to bother with doing the 16s. We know we got all kinds of room here. 
So we're making progress on how to measure your truck for your trailer. Okay, now we're on that middle orange mark on the bed floor and the coupler's lined up perfect with it. So that's where you would be with a 12 inch. And we're actually gonna put a 12 inch on this coupler of the trailer. But again, you can see how much room you have on the bed rail and how much room you have between the cab. And we're still jackknifed more than 90 degrees. And you can see that now that we've moved over uh, three inches, we have a little more room. So we're gonna actually put the, six, the 12 inch but it also has a four inch extension on the coupler for if this was a flat bed with a recessed ball. So we'll show you that next. The other thing to consider is the width of the trailer. The one we're looking at right now, uh, you know, like Kent and I were discussing, Cimarron standard gooseneck length is 8.2. Now we can go longer on, on some models, depending on what we do at the front end and bigger trailers. Uh, but most of these are going to be standard 8.2, where a lot of manufacturers will actually run a 7.6 or 7.8 length nose. So you have to take that into consideration. The other thing you have to take in consideration is the width of the trailer. As Kent was showing you, so this is a 6.10 wide trailer. A lot of manufacturer call theirs 7 foot wide uh, that are going to kind of fit into this category. So then we can go 7.6 wide and 8 foot wide, even 8.4 wide. So when you do that, you widen the trailer which is gonna narrow down that gap between the back of the cab and the actual gooseneck of the trailer as well. And kind of some of the easier ways to tell it is, you know, depending on the actual, uh, you know, running board on the side of the trailer, you know, with this trailer here being the, the 610 wide, we have a little bit more running board. 7.6, we'd have a little bit less. Eight foot, we'd have no running board down the side of this trailer and maybe just a little bit of wheel well on the outside of the trailer. And then 8.4, you wouldn't even have that. Uh, how wide do you think that fender is here for a six foot eight? Um, you know, you're going to be in that 11 inches. Okay. okay. That's how I usually look at them. That's how wide the fender is. But yeah. So yeah, that's good. So wow, you get an eight foot four trailer, you're going to be wide longer. Yeah, than we're, semi. we're widening everything out. Well, then it widens the nose out as well, which means it's going to get closer to that cab. So that's why it's really important to watch it, especially on these short boxes. And that's true. And you know, like these start out almost seven foot, then they come in what, two foot to the nose? Is that what they usually angle in? Yeah, it's a, it's a 18 degree. Oh, okay. um, but then again, as, as, as we widen it, and then we can even run more of a square nose uh, on, some, on some trailers. So everything has to be taken into consideration when you're doing this, um, because you might be looking at a living quarters where we're looking at a standard width trailer right now. So again, you got to keep that in, in mind when you are measuring these. That's really good to talk to a good trader salesperson like you or your staff so you can narrow all that down, make sure you get everything to fit right. Yep, absolutely. Now, you write, later on, we're going to actually review these narrow nose Cimarrones. I want to see between a big nose and a narrow nose, the difference it makes in fuel mileage, which is always interesting to me. But yeah, that's, uh, that's good. We'll do that in a later video. There you go. Well, that looks pretty cool. Well, <laughs> CJ, big muscles, put this puppy on there. And that's, we got this in the smallest hole because this is an SB112, meaning 12 inches or extension. That's measured from the down tube to the coupler tube. That's 12 inches. And it's all reinforced. This is plate metal. I mean, it's heavy duty. And they make these even in an HD for those wedge traders because of that so much tongue weight they have on them. And this one is the SB112 XL, which means it has an extra long coupler tube. And that's for those flatbed trucks with a recessed ball. This will drop right in there. And that's the only one I can find. <laughs> so that's what we got. Normally they're gonna be four inches shorter than that. And for a regular truck, that's all you need. But if you got a recessed ball, you need this one. So this thing is heavy duty. It's rated 24,000 pounds, 6,000 pounds of tongue weight. So now we're gonna actually hook it up to the trailer and show you where our measurements will be the same as when we put it over that 12 inch 
mark on the floor of the truck bed. Oh, it's even got a warning label. Verify the clearance. <laughs> <laughs> It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Well, we did it. We connected. Now, I don't know if you noticed it when it latched. We'll see if the other camera caught it, but there's a latch on that right side from here, and that automatically closes on the ball. Spring-loaded stainless steel pin, so you don't have to grease it. And then there's a cable that goes to it that you run up around by your jack, so when you're lifting it up, you just pull that cable, and it's unhooked. You don't have to climb in there and beat out of the hammer or any of that nonsense. Well, we're done with the project. Hope you learned something about short bed trucks and what you got to do and some other things. Now, people always ask me too, well, yeah, you're making your trailer a little bit longer, so you got to watch which mailbox you run over. But it's only, you know, 16 inches at most and clear down to 6 inch at the smallest. And, you know, CJ brought up a good point. He's like, BMW and Pop, they all make a 4 inch ball extension. I don't like them because, you know, it can loosen up some things. But sometimes you have to add that to whatever hitch you have to get where you need to be. But that's a different way of measuring when the ball moves versus when the trailer coupler moves. So this is all about when the trailer coupler moves. But anyway, the point I want to make is it'll handle the same as if before you put the, the coupler on. You're not going to, you know, the front float or any of that stuff or overweight any part of it. If you think of it as a wheelbarrow, you put longer handles on a wheelbarrow and that makes it easier to lift because you're transferring weight to the wheel of the wheelbarrow. Same way on a trailer, you put a longer nose on, you're transferring some of the weight back to the trailer. Now on a really big trailer, it might be as much as 300 pounds. Most of the time it's 100 pounds or less. So you're actually taking some weight off the truck and usually these trucks, we get them overloaded. So that's a good thing, but it won't steer any different. It won't handle going down the road any different after you put a short bit extension on here. Does that work for you? That does work for me. Okay, I always want to ask the trailer expert because, you know, I'm old, you know, and these things can happen where I forget what I'm doing. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it. So I hope you to tell other your friends about this, this video and come see the folks at TransWest and get your truck and trailer and you're all set because they'll help you get the right combination put together. Thanks for watching.